Hello and welcome to this week's episode on how to be a great GM. My name is Guy and we're continuing to celebrate the player. Celebrate the player month. And uh, this week we're going to be doing a deep dive into fleshing out your character. Now, if you find these videos useful, please hit that like button or the subscribe button. Either way, it helps support the channel. And um, yes, it doesn't take you five seconds. Click, click. So, how do you flesh out your character and why would you want to flesh out your character? Two very important questions because surely you've got your stats, that's all you need. Well, it depends on what kind of experience you want. In my experience, the more fleshed out the character, the more interesting the character becomes. Now, this does come with a warning. Your character, even if you plan it before you start playing, is going to start developing on their own and you need to keep up with that. You need to kind of follow along with that. So it's a living document that we're going to be creating, not a static set of rules. So cast that out of your, your thinking process right now. So the very first step, the very first thing that we look at when we talk about the character is a physical description. Now, a physical description is something that you're only going to sort of mention once or twice, maybe in your entire role playing space, if you're not using it to its fullest extent. Physical description is not just about your height and the hair color and that sort of thing. It's also how you walk. It's about your physical quirks. <clears throat> Do you kind of press your glasses up against your nose? Do you kind of put your hand, uh, your your chin on your, your closed fist when you're thinking? Do you maybe walk with a slight limp? Do you have a strange gait? Do you roll your feet as you walk? Um, it can be something along those lines. So physical description is something that you really want to... to invest spending a little bit of time in however you don't give it all to the players at once so describe your character here's my 40 page description of everything they're never going to remember that so what's the first impression that you make when you are seen by somebody tall a little bit broody seems to clench their fists quite often a hook hawk like nose and then very tightly drawn lips that's all you really need Later on, you might say, I pull back this dark hood to reveal the black, black hair underneath, which I gingerly stroke down to make sure that I look okay. It's not a huge detail, and your pl fellow players are going to go, well, okay. But they've now committed to memory that your character has black hair, and that your character has a limp as you, I limp across the hallway to the king before I bow. Gently, I place my two hands together and then start to clench as I get more nervous. Little details, but it suddenly elevates your entire experience, your entire character into this realm of being someone real, someone who's there. Now, again, you don't have to mention this every single time that you are talking about your character. My character limps towards the goblin. My character limps towards the ogre. My character limps towards... Yes, we get it. Okay. What you need to do, though, is pepper your description of your physical characteristics throughout the role-playing experience. So over time, we get the sense of who this character is and what this character is about. We then need to develop that further into their mannerisms. So as I have already mentioned, the limping, the clenching of the hands, the, the locking of the jaw, perhaps I recently discovered personally, apparently I clench my jaw. I, I, I don't know why but it caused me to go slightly deaf in one ear because of all sorts of things. And they're like, oh, you just clench your jaw. Stop clenching. I, I don't know how to stop clenching my jaw because I've been doing it subconsciously. Nonetheless, the whole idea is that you can impart that into your character. Uh, they clench their jaw or perhaps they look to the sky. There's a wonderful moment in, ver in almost, almost any very well-made film where we'll see some weird mannerism that the character exhibits. It'll happen once or twice, and sometimes it will happen multiple times, and then we'll see why they do it occasionally. Or we don't get an insight into why they do it, and we're just left wondering, going, oh, okay, well, that's a pretty good ritual. So mannerisms, rituals, things like that, anything that will create, again, entrench in your, your players' minds what your character's like. Now, the whole idea here, of course, is, again, the repetition, but it mustn't slow down the game. At no point should the description of your character or the description of the ritual that your character is going through through should it slow down the game or detract or derail the game it should be something there that is added as flavor not as the meat 
you then need to figure out your character's worldview. Now, this is different from character alignment and all those other kind of contrivances that people have come up with in terms of sort of pigeonholing holding your character. Even on this channel, we've done the same thing. Are you a defender? Are you a protector? Are you a soul character? Are you an adventure character? All those kinds of things. Now, the worldview is basically what does your character think about the space? Are they cynical? Oh, the elves are never going to join this alliance. They're far too stuck up to come down here and get mucked in with goblin wars. They're never going to join us. That's a worldview. It's not linked to an alignment. It's not linked to a moral or an ethical choice. It's just the character's perspective. They are just slightly cynical. Alternatively, the character could be, oh, oh, no, the elves have been staunch allies for years. Of course they're going to be here. Now, if you just jot down your worldview and you say, well, generally upbeat or downbeat, cynical, pessimistic, optimistic, realist, it will guide you in terms of those role playing moments where you go, oh, I'm not sure what my character would do in this situation. Well, look at their worldview. If their worldview is, say, cynical, they might go, Meh. well, there's no point in trying. On the other hand, if their worldview is practical, they go, I don't know how to try, but we should try. Let's look for a bridge, or let's look for this, let's look for that. Or can someone help me? So worldview can be really, really useful in terms of creating an easy way for you to roleplay and judge whether you're roleplaying well or not by are you fulfilling their worldview. Worldviews can change over time. The pessimist can eventually become an optimist or maybe more likely a realist. Things can evolve, and that would be excellent roleplaying. You then need to look at what are their pain points. What causes your player to go, oh no, why did it have to be slugs? I hate slugs. Ugh, I'm not going near the cave. It's got slugs in it. Pain points are things that will trigger your character. Now, I had an excellent role-playing moment, literally last night of the recording of this video anyway, where the one character has been obsessed over gems his entire life, and the party found this new very powerful gem that allowed you to raise the undead and then control them. Raise 1d100 undead per casting, as a matter of fact. The character was absolutely in love with this gem. Another player character said, no, I'm not giving you this gem. You are obsessed with gems. You need to get out of this. This is a powerful artifact. We need to destroy it. Or we need to use it to stop the control. Da, 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 da. And they had a huge RP moment because both of them were playing superbly. The one was fixated on the gem and couldn't understand what, what's the harm. I can stop collecting gems at any time, but I like that gem. It's really useful. I'm the only one who understands how the gem works. I should be the one who uses it. And the counter to that was you're obsessed with the gem and you would probably use it even though it would cause harm. It was a great RP moment. The pain points were starting to come through, which, which was fantastic. It was really, really good. Another thing you can add in is desires. What does your character desire? What do they truly, truly desire as opposed to what do they need or what do they want? A desire is something that is going to drive them in a certain position. If they're in a library, I have a desire for this kind of knowledge. It's a shorthand to help you to remember what your character could be doing in scenes where you might not know. Oh, I don't feel like my character would do anything here, or at least I don't know what to do here. Look at that as an, op an option and go, oh, my character desires this. I'm actually going to go and explore that. And then off you go and follow that desire. So desires can be straightforward. They can be simple. Uh, they can be easy. They can be cliched. Oh, I desire all women. So I'm going to flirt with everything that I come across. Sure, that's what they desire. But then to me, that says, well, what they actually need is to actually love themselves first. So they don't have to go looking for other people to vindicate and to... Um, acknowledge their existence anyway that's a whole different story finally you then look at what is their fear and their phobia now a pain point is something that irritates you it's something that you're going to to not want to do but you will eventually do it a fear or a phobia may very well be debilitating insofar as i actually have a phobia and i can't go into that chamber because i will just collapse I personally have a fear of snakes, and even an image of a snake is very unsettling to me. If I know that there's a potential or an idea or a hint that a snake may have been in an actual room that someone's asking me to go into, I have to leave it immediately. Literally, my legs turn to jelly, and I don't know what to do with myself. I am all consumed with this fear that the snake will single me out and attack me. Now, that is my phobia. If there was a pit like the one in the Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark full of snakes, I would turn myself over to the Nazis and say, shoot me, because there are clearly snakes all over this desert and I need to leave here right now. 
So adding in a phobia or a fear can be really useful. It can be debilitating towards the character. So be aware that you shouldn't say, well, I have a fear of humans. That is a real fear, but it's going to be so prohibitive in terms of what your character can actually do within the game that either you're going to have to ignore it, in which case why include it in the first place, or you're going to have to just venture out into the wilderness and never go into towns, which again is going to prevent the GM from being able to create adventures specifically for you in town. That's something that you want to kind of avoid. However, adding them in, having a phobia of being cut to death by a thousand small blades again another real phobia is definitely something that the gym can work with to make sure that you're attacked by pygmies with thousands of small blades you would then appropriately react according to that so those are some things that i think are really going to to help you flesh your character out now you don't reveal these as a giant list hello my name is fred and i have the following pain points these are my phobias that no these come out over time you express them to your fellow players characters through role playing through the campfire moments where they sit and go does anyone else have a fear of mushrooms i'm terrified of them or you know what really grates me it's when we go through towns and no one stops to buy equipment i feel like we should be doing this more that's a pain point a phobia and a pain point so there we have uh, two great dialogue moments that are inspired by just having these few questions answered your task today is to add in all of this stuff to your character. Go to a character that you're currently playing or if you're designing a new character and add in just one of each of these things, except for physical description, where you might want to expand upon it just a little bit and then use it every now and again. Have it as a separate sheet of paper or a separate screen or however you play these days. And then just refer to it. And, oh, yeah, I've got that mannerism. And then just drop it in once or twice. I guarantee you, you're going to see an improvement in not only your experience. Your experience will feel more real, but the character will feel more real. And ultimately, your experience will be enhanced by that. Anyway, time to check out this week's sponsor. This week's sponsor is none other than World Anvil. Now, this week, we're talking about World Anvil, but from a character perspective. You have a tab here called your RPG characters, and when you uh, view them, you can enter in your character, but they can have a completely living existence within World Anvil. Not only can you load up uh, gallery images of the character, if you may or may not have had them or commissioned them, but you can keep a character journal where uh, you can keep entries, you can, cre you can create uh, all kinds of little notes for yourself, you can create a history, you can uh, look at their character information, you can have a character stat sheet with all of their stat blocks and uh, depending on which system you're using of course you can load up the character sheet itself which is fully interactive and when you click on the actual ability you'll see that uh, it actually rolls for you as well so a lot of information can be stored in the world anvil heroes system and uh, i have to say it is really really useful you can see there his location is salt marsh which was a map uh, that uh, we uh, used quite some time ago but there you are that is a lad he can even have a uh, almost twitter page on his own where he updates and keeps his uh, followers uh, uh, well updated i guess you could say World Anvil is free to use, but if you want access to all kinds of additional goodies, not only within the Hero System, but within World Anvil itself, all you need to do is sign up for a subscription. Now, if you use the code GREATGM, you get 40%. 40% off of any subscription service that you pick up with World Anvil. And uh, I have to say, I use World Anvil on a weekly basis. I think it's absolutely, absolutely awesome. I encourage you to give it a try. Now, from me, all I have to say is a big thank you to you for watching all the way through to the end and for our Patreons for making this video possible. Until next week, however, I wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming.